And we're talking about our accounting reporting standards. There's two fundamental standards that we look at. In the United States and other North American nations, we look at generally accepted accounting principles. And in non-American states, throughout Europe and other parts of the world, we look at the international financial reporting standards. Uh, where there's plenty of similarities between the two, there are certain differences that um, do need to be highlighted so that the reader of the financial information understands where these variations will come. Um, one that's um, very often highlighted would be the way we account for inventory. When you think in terms of inventory, it's a key asset. It's one of your current assets in your financial statement. You think of um, what do we have in stock. It's an inventoryable item, whether it's going to be used for production or it's going to be a retail shop for, um, for sale. Um, there's two principles that you know, a lot of folks would be familiar with. There's FIFO, first in, first out, and there's LIFO, last in, first out. Um, for example, GAAP would allow the financial statement to be presented using either standard, whether you want to use a first in, first out inventory metric or you want to use a last in, first out inventory measure, uh, whereas in IFRS, it prohibits uh, LIFO. That's one of, the, one of the standards that you'll be um, considering when you're going to present your financial statements. There's all, there are other differences, but this is uh, one of the first ones a lot of folks like to highlight. Uh, other key differences. You think about rules-based versus principle-based, and I, I'd like to focus on that one, I think, because that, that, that is probably uh, the key difference, having worked in both environments. When you think about um, financial statements, you hear, you, you'll hear the term of art use statutory report, statutory, 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 and statutory reporting and regulation goes straight towards the concept of rules. There's a strict parameter of rules. Uh, gap much like the U.S. tax law, is very much rules-driven. It doesn't always pass what some folks would say is the logic test. It might not always make perfect sense to the user of the information or the preparer of the information for that matter, but it's, it's rules-based, though. Um, there's no middle ground. You will do the accounting standard per the, you know, you report your accounting information per, per these rules and standards. So the reader understands the rules. They might not agree with them, but these are the rules. Whereas IRFRS, what it's attempted to do is go more principally oriented. So there's more flexibility in um, how we go about reporting revenue recognition, for example. Revenue is a really good one. Or um, how are we going to utilize inventory, like we talked about just previously, that what makes the lot, what passes the logic test? What makes more sense for the user of that information? What is the most pertinent? What is the most relative or, or relatable or uh, usable financial information? And that goes towards principles. Okay, what, what is the most useful part of that information? Not necessarily what the rules dictate or allow, but principally speaking, where will we get the most benefit from that financial information? And IRFRS attempts to go in that direction, and in many ways it's very, very successful. And, and that's a key differentiator when you think about GAAP, strictly rules-based, historically oriented. Um, we can evaluate them and understand how those rules work, whereas IRFRS has attempted to go towards more of a principle-based basis, uh, basis of accounting and, and reporting. Again, we talked about our inventory um, discussions, developmental costs, when you think about research and development, they are treated differently, intangibles, income statements, and I mentioned earlier, uh, revenue recognition. So within your income statement line, <coughs> you're gonna have a more principally balanced way of recognizing your revenue under the IRFRS as opposed to the GAAP. Rather, rather than the rules-based one. So you want to understand which financial statements, uh, what the basis of your financial statements were prepared upon when you're reviewing them and when you're the user of that financial information. And there will be other variations when it comes to fixed assets, which is another key one, because when you look at the value of your organization or the wealth, when you think about your assets, liabilities, and the equity section, how we report our assets is hugely important. The life of the assets, when you start thinking higher level uh, accounting terms of art like impairments, and how are they, what are the rules associated with impairments, which would be the write down of a value of an asset. Um, how does the IRFRS look at that? How would the gap accounting standards apply that? So you really need to understand as a reader of the financial statements, what are the principles being applied so you get better information out of that reading, okay? And in the last several years, there's um, been the concept of convergence. And when you think about convergence, what is that? It's the bringing together, okay? Because when you think about it, having two different accounting standards uh, with many organizations operating in a global economy, really it, it, it becomes redundant and um, you're creating cost. When you think about management of cost and you think about efficiencies, having to report on two different accounting standards is a lot of work. Um, 
if you're, especially when you think about the sc scope and scale of some of the multinational corporations, if they're having to prepare accounting reports on the basis of U.S. GAAP to meet the requirements of, say, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, while conversely they have operations within the European community, they have to report on IRFRS standards. So you have two different reporting standards being pr uh, produced at, at the same time. And again, sometimes the differences can be fairly dramatic, especially when you start looking at asset valuation and you start looking at revenue recognition and your inventory management. So if you have different standards applied towards different reporting bodies, it's not efficient of the organization. It can be confusing for some of the preparers of those statements. Oftentimes, it'll require separate staff members to prepare those. So you have redundant staff members really reporting on the same information just with nuanced differences. So the idea of having that convergence where you're starting to bring the principally-based IFRS standards together with the rules-based GAAP standards and where they're going to start to merge and look more, more similar. And um, we'll probably see the rules-based go more towards the principle-based. So it probably would make more sense and be more logical. Okay.